so Felix, a uh, little something different here, uh, if you would. Can you tell us what is this NMOS steering committee and uh, what is going on in, uh, in the AMWA that might be uh, important for the uh, VSF related audience to know about? And I see your presentation. Say a word. Let's just be sure you got audio. Check one, two. Yep, you sound good. Uh, take it away. That's my Solomon uh, testing of microphones. Um, yes, Brad, um, NMOS steering committee, that's a little bit of an internal thing within the AMWA, but I think it's important to communicate a little bit about what we are doing uh, with, with it. Um, and um, it, it was formed uh, a little bit before the end of, uh, at the end of, the, of last year. Uh, and the idea behind NMOS steering is with a growing complexity, a growing number of the network media open specification, NMOS, uh, and the, 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 the growing complexity of, of, of that, and the fact that it becomes more and more into real production, um, th there was a need in the AMWA to uh, focus the, all the governance of these, uh, this set of specification. So uh, the NMOS steering was formed by the board of director of the AMWA to take care of that part uh, of the business of the AMWA and directly report to the board of directors whenever there's an important decision to be made about it. Um, the, the NMOS steering look about the overall strategy roadmap and architecture for NMOS uh, and it makes recommendation to the board when it's time to either start an activity uh, a new specification, extend uh, 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 an activity that has reached um, has delivered as first deliverable, uh, elevate publication of specifications. And I'll talk about uh, this, uh, how this works with uh, the different levels of publications. Um, and establish a communication plan with the AMWA marketing. Uh, and we'll talk about this a little. One of the first actions the NMOS steering did was to establish a, a grid of criteria um, to uh, maximize the quality and the adoption of the NMOS specification. What are the good criteria? What are the good ingredients it takes when we start a new activity, when we have a proposal from some MOI members to create a new uh, interface specification, for example? Uh, and, and so we have a number of criteria regarding, um, is it part of the NMOS roadmap? Because if it's not, we should first talk about this and how does it fit with the rest? Uh, does it address real business needs? Uh, is it compatible with the current NMOS architecture? Otherwise we need to make it compatible with the NMOS architecture. Um, uh, we verify also what other alternatives are out there. Why do we need to create something new? Uh, it's an important check. Um, do we have a wide support, engaged participation, a good representation of users in each of these activities? Uh, we have also the concept of a definition of done. What's the definition of done in an activity? Uh, it has to be generally proven by code. So when we organize a workshop, there, there must be some uh, implementations of uh, the specification before we can uh, really elevate it to uh, specification, publish specification. And we al also have an inclusion of the, 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 the aspect of the, the, the interface specification in, in the case of, of an IS in the test suite. So there's really a bar in terms of quality when um, there's a publication of a specification of NMOS. And we work time bonded. Each activity has a target deadline and will report at the end of their uh, period of time. Um, hopefully by being, having completed their work uh, or just to discuss, okay, where are we and what do we need? Do we need more time? Is there any blocking factor? Do we have a problem in the participation we, so we can address uh, any issues? And finally, a clear IPR policy. Uh, Usually it's a Renzi uh, policy um, in most of our activities. Um, fast and agile specification development. Uh, 
I think it's very important to explain that a little bit because there's a there's sometimes a perception that NMOS is not finished. I hear that sometimes, or NMOS, you know, it's still in development. And and uh, I can understand why where this perception comes from when we compare to uh, other due process organization where there's a clear moment where the the, the specification or the the standard is published and is kind of it's it's not moving anymore. Uh, but what we want here, and especially because we deal with software code and software specification, we want to uh, to enable the, the fact that we, we can uh, ship earlier our specification, give it a little bit of time to mature before we turn, we crystallize it totally. Uh, and those are practices, uh, you know, used in, in the software development in general, uh, that we want to use that as a way to develop specification so work in progress is the first step when we start the work uh, it belongs to well scope activity it's time bonded it has a clear um, uh, definition of done there's a business owner that represents the users and that will check verify that all the user stories are uh, addressed by the new uh, specification or the new work uh, there's a technical lead uh, that reports to the steering and that drive uh, the, the group. And uh, we monitor that there's an engaged participation. It, it really have to be a multi, multi uh, vendor and multi user participation in those groups. We really look for um, active contribution. So these are uh, work uh, most of the time, or I, I'm not aware even of, of, of time where it's not on GitHub and available publicly. Uh, so there's, there can be even uh, interaction with uh, non non AMOA members uh, on, on this uh, with, with the issue and uh, pull request eventually. Uh, specification is the first step where there's a kind of a proof that this is a mature uh, and ready for product development. So it will usually happen at the end of a workshop where there's a number of implementation from different vendors, try it out. We usually find uh, small things to fix, clarification in the spec. Uh, and this is where uh, once it, uh, it reach all the criteria, including uh, being um, included in the test uh, suites, uh, it's reviewed by the steering, which will make a recommendation to the board to turn it into a AMOA specification. And once it's published, it's immutable. It has a number uh, in the form of the X, Y, uh, point one, uh, point one being the minor revision. Um, so that at this point, uh, it's still possible that there are minor revision, um, uh, but every time we, we do minor revision doesn't break the compatibility with a major revision, a dot Y revision. Um, and after, a little while uh, of existence of specification when we have uh, a certain number of implementations uh, in, into shipping products and it will show up in JTNM tested and it will be um, it will be known that there's a number of implementations. Uh, usually the, 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 the steering will consult with the those implementers to make sure is the specification uh, good do you have any major problem otherwise we crystallize it and we call it the stable specification um, and and from that moment uh, only minor revision not breaking any compatibility can happen uh, and if we need to do um, a, a major change to the specification it will be an, another dot y version um, usually with more feature uh, in that case. And, and just to give an idea of uh, where are we with overall, so uh, we'll, we'll, I will go in the next slide on to, on, uh, to show what's the role a little bit of these different specs, just as a reminder, but you can see here that uh, ISO 4, ISO 5, ISO 8 are stable specifications, uh, while uh, 6, 7, 9 and BCP 003 uh, one are uh, specification as, as it uh, stands. Uh, but just to illustrate a little bit more, and I know many of you have 
heard that many times what NMOS do, but I think it's good to repeat, um, uh, especially for those who, who wants to jump into that, that uh, world. Um, so every uh, uh, API communication uh, are, can be secured using BCP 00301. Then ISO 9 is there to um, provide a system, a common system parameter like PDP parameter that are common across all the devices. So um, the device can get this information in the central location. Then the device can register themselves to the NMOS registry or registries. And a controller, a broadcast controller, uh, can query the registry to know what are the devices that are uh, that are online. Once it's there, the controller can establish some connection using ISO5. So it will tell receiving device to connect to a certain sender. ISO6, it's at another level. It's at the level of the network controller talking to the network. So establish uh, routes, uh, protect bandwidth. Um, so it's more a controller to network uh, interface. Uh, BCP 00201 uh, is natural grouping. So it will indicate in a sender if different flows are, are should be used altogether. Uh, a, uh, so, uh, for example, in an SDI gateway, you know that the video and the, those different audio streams and the ancillary data streams comes from the same uh, physical uh, SDI source. Uh, they will be tagged in a way that the controller can recognize that they come together. And ISO 8 is a way for a controller to tell uh, endpoints to uh, shuffle the audio if they have that capability. Uh, or to mute the audio if they have that capability. Finally, IS07 is for events and telecommunication between uh, uh, controller and user interface or endpoints end and, and user interface. So we can see that NMOS is a bit everywhere in a, in a system. Um, And work in progress, uh, we're uh, finalizing some uh, things in the authorization server. So it's IS10 and BCP003-02 that are um, being worked out at the moment. So really NMOS fills in a lot of gaps in the, the, the idea of a full stack system. Uh, if we go back to the EBU uh, pyramid, um, you 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 see that on the operational control it's mostly relying on iso4 iso5 iso7 iso8 uh, bcp002 same thing here iso9 is uh is a, the system resource and the rest um on security for example and uh on device control here uh and on some of the monitoring and configuration, it's part of the ongoing work. Um, so really NMOS tackled the, the center of the, the pyramid. So these are the different ongoing activities. Um, security work that, that is ongoing. There was a workshop recently, so uh, the team is going to uh, address all the findings uh, during the workshop. Receiver capabilities built on top of ISO4 to indicate the ability of a receiver to receive uh, formats, for example, of the senders. So when a controller tries to establish a connection between a sender and a receiver, it knows in advance if it's a possibility to, to, for this to happen or, or if it would need to require another uh, receiver or to reconfigure the sender, for example. Um, EDID connection management it's a requirement that comes from the IPMX community. Uh, IPMX relies on NMOS uh, for the control, and there was a need to uh, carry the edit information that a display um, 
uh, output. Um, so there's a first phase on really the architecture and design and, and what, what would be the scope of, of a, sp a specification about it. Uh, and device control modeling, uh, there's a, a phase one that deliver a first phase studying all the existing uh, solution out there. Uh, and there's a phase two proposal in, in preparation that we hope to kick, uh, to kick off very soon. Hey, Felix. Yes, Brad. If you could go back one slide, I just wanted to make a connection between some of these. Um, the device control modeling, for example, could be used to model what a device is, uh, all of the different things that a device is capable of doing. The receiver capabilities is, uh, a, it's specifically saying what are the real-time abilities of a device right now um, compared to all of the things that it might be able to do. And you can see that uh, EDID connection management around monitoring might make use of some of those things. So I was just wanting to tie those things together. And of course, if you want to have those communications be secure, you would use security. So similar to the way that uh, uh, the ground cloud, cloud to ground, and the 2110 over WAN and the JPEG access activities tie it together. There is a, a thread here that ties these different activities together as well, and that might not be obvious to uh, our attendees who aren't maybe that familiar with the work of the AMWA. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. And especially within those activity receiver capabilities also as some liaison with, with some previous uh, VSF work. So I think it's very important, this kind of bilateral uh, communication between the two, the two organization. Uh, some of the people are part of both uh, activity and, and some are not, but the channel of communication, I think that uh, very important to keep uh, open and, and coordinated. Um, and because it's not enough to make good technology, um, we uh, have put together, together with the marketing, um, AMOA marketing uh, person also, Neil uh, from the AMOA, um, and great help from, from Luan, from Nivian as well, um, put together a communication plan um, and uh, and some other um, members also participate into that uh, to really have a, a plan to market that technology and, and better explain what, what are the benefits um, and uh, explain also that NMOS is easy to implement contrary to some uh, uh, some um, people might, might, might think um, and um, and of course, it's key to a complete solution. We see that when we see uh, the EBU pyramid full stack, how important is NMOS. Um, so there's an ongoing refresh of the NMOS website to reflect that. There's a refresh of the technical documentation also to make it easier, more, more affordable, more clear uh, for, uh, to get started. Uh, there's also, uh, finally, I'll, I'll talk about uh, an initiative that is very important to really uh, uh, bring uh, people on board when it's time to get started with NMOS uh, is a starter kit for users and implementers. Um, it's in um, incorporating Docker containers and, and as uh, an NVIDIA Sony uh, controller, uh, Sony NMOS CPP registry and virtual node, AMO and MOS testing tool are in that. Uh, and some supporting, supporting service, uh, DNS, uh, DHCP, MQTT broker for I, ISO 7. So that's a nice package to get started and as some open source com contribution from some uh, members. Um, and the, the container also pass uh, some of the, um, the, the JTNM tested program on, on NMOS related. So it's an easy to uh, start uh, Docker uh, and uh, Richard HT from NVIDIA who really uh, put that together will present at the IP Oktoberfest next week uh, and uh, there's a release on GitHub. So we really want as the AMOA 
uh, steering uh, and the AMOA marketing want to really leverage that initiative to help um, both user community and vendor community to get started. It's my experience at CBC in the lab. This is where we started with NMOS by using this, uh, this kit. Uh, so uh, I think it's, it's really a good way for, uh, for especially for broadcast background people uh, to, get, to, to get started. So that, that was it. And thanks to my co-chair, uh, Gareth from Sony, who prepared uh, the presentation, uh, helped me prepare that presentation. Okay, great. Felix, thank you very much. I appreciate your sharing that. And uh, for those of you that have been following uh, Felix and uh, been up at CBC, that you might say a quick word about your background. I think you have a, a very, very recently new home personally. Oh yeah, uh, so yeah, we're we're in the in the the moment of of moving to our new building. That is the one behind me, in the picture. Uh, and especially, I'm responsible for the lab uh, where we do all the the tests for. Um, media over IP equipment in particular and, and others. Um, uh, so we're very excited because now we just moved the lab into the new building and that, that's a, a real nice uh, facility for us. Um, so we're very excited at the moment and we hope we can uh, welcome you one day to uh, uh, do a VSF event uh, perhaps and then we can show you uh, the new place. That would be fantastic. We would We would really love to see it. Thanks and, and good luck with your facility. I know it's been uh, been a while that, uh, that you've been getting ready for it. So it must be exciting to finally be in there this week. All right, thank you, Felix. Terrific. Thanks.